I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. If you're like me at all, you've probably had some smart home devices for a really long time. Well, I'm just now dipping my toes in whole home automation. And some of the stuff you can do is really cool, but I think it could be cooler. What if you could control your entire smart home from a wall-mounted computer interface that looks like it came from a spaceship? Let's do it. A little bit of backstory on this project. This video is sponsored by HP Support, and they sent me this really nice laptop, and they wanted me to show you how easy it is to take this apart and upgrade it, and we're gonna do that. But also, it's a really cool laptop. It's futuristic, it's thin, and it got me thinking. Wouldn't it be cool if you mounted this thing on the wall so it could be a smart home dashboard? And if you're gonna go that far, you may as well just wrap it in some really cool stuff to make it look like it's on a spaceship. So that's what we're gonna do. Like usual, I don't really have a plan, but I do have a rough idea. So here's what I'm thinking. I wanna mount this thing on the wall like this so that you can see the screen and you can access the trackpad and then we'll cover the rest of it up with cool sci-fi stuff and just make it look pretty awesome. And then on the screen, we can actually show a dashboard from Home Assistant, which is a thing I've been playing with lately to run my smart home devices inside the house. This thing will be mounted in the wall on this orientation, but of course, I don't want it to be permanent, so I wanna be able to take it out of this contraption to still use it as a laptop. So I'm thinking of this more as like a docking station where this thing slides in and charges and you can view it, and then when you actually wanna use it, you can pull it out. Now eventually, it'd be really cool to replace this with a touch screen, maybe running on a Raspberry Pi, but that's a future video. I don't have those things, I have this. So I've got to figure out actually how to mount this thing. It's not flat on the back when it's open. It's about an inch thick at the thickest part, but I've got to figure out a way to support all of the different sections. And really I was looking for inspiration about what the outside of this thing could look like. I was looking around my shop and I actually found this plastic container top. There's something mildly sci-fi about this chamfered edge and kind of utilitarian, and it turns out that this laptop actually fits almost perfectly on the inside of this edge. So because I don't currently have a better idea, we're actually gonna start with this plastic top as the frame for this whole thing. Cut out the center and then figure out a way to mount the laptop behind it or inside of it or something, but use that frame as the basis for building the rest of the structure. So the basic wall tray to hold the laptop is pretty much done, but I gotta let the glue dry. Luckily, the RAM that I just ordered showed up. So let's go upgrade the computer. Like I mentioned before, this video is sponsored by HP Support. Now, they've made it super easy to upgrade and repair select HP laptops through their YouTube channel, HP Support. They've got a bunch of videos about different computers. I found the one about this particular model, and I'm gonna go through it so that I can upgrade the RAM in this machine. So the cool thing is that every one of these videos has chapter markers, so you don't have to watch the entire thing. You just jump to the part that you need. So I need to know how to take the bottom off, take the RAM out, and put new RAM in. Luckily, it's right here, so it should be pretty easy. I figured that would be pretty easy to do, and it turns out it was super easy to do and very quick. Now my laptop has 32 gigs of RAM. That's pretty awesome. Big thanks to HP Support for sponsoring the video. Be sure to check them out on YouTube. The link is down in the description. Let's take this thing back to the shop. I've got it back in here, and now I've got to actually figure out a way to keep it in place because the space that the laptop is going in is bigger than the laptop. So I've got to add some spacers down here to hold it on this plane. I've got to put some stuff behind it so it doesn't rock back and forth when you're using the touchpad. Then we get to do the fun part, which is making it look like it belongs in space. Spaceship? So I took a picture of that as flat as I could from above. That way I can take it into Fusion, and then I can start designing shapes on top of this that I can cut out on the laser and actually start putting this thing together. I 
I've had to cut all these pieces multiple times and make lots of adjustments, mainly because this plastic thing has a lot of bend to it. It doesn't have a lot of structure, so I'm kind of having to work around that. But I think this is starting to actually look really cool. I want this thing to look like it's on a spaceship. So everything's gonna be different gray tones. I'm gonna go ahead and spray all these panels and get it glued up so we can start adding the details and the weathering, because that's what's really gonna make it look cool. I just realized that I haven't really explained the smart home aspect of this project because it's kind of secondary and I'm kind of new to it. Not new to smart home stuff, but I'm new to Home Assistant, which is what I'm using to run my smart home locally here in my house, not out in the cloud. That's one thing I like about it, but the other thing is that it provides you dashboards that you can customize to control all your smart home devices from one place through a browser. So the idea here is that we have this dashboard on the laptop that we can see and control from this cool panel on the wall. But all of that is running on a Raspberry Pi somewhere else. I'm just barely dipping my toes in Home Assistant. It seems pretty cool so far, but I'm really just getting started, so I can't offer a whole lot of advice about it. You can Google it and find everything you need to know. Wood glue and CA glue were perfect for getting all of these pieces attached, but I'm not gonna be able to use that for the outer surround. This plastic piece has a lot of flex to it, and it has bends on the side that I need to kind of compress. So I'm gonna have to use something different to hold this in place. I use this stuff all the time, but I always like to point it out because a lot of people don't know about it. There's an adhesive called E6000, which is one of my favorites. It's good for attaching pretty much anything to anything else, which means it'll be good for plastic to wood. The only downside here is that it takes, I don't know, about 20 hours to cure. So you have to clamp the pieces and pretty much leave them overnight. But the bond is kind of flexible. It works on any material to any material. This is fantastic stuff. Another cool thing about this stuff, it does come in clear, but I like the black. And in this case, it's actually really good to have squeeze out because it just looks like grime in these little edges. Eventually, I'm gonna weather all this stuff, so that's just gonna add to the effect. Our container is ready. The next part is my favorite part because we get to add greeblies. And if you're not familiar, greeblies are the little bits and bobs you get to add to a project to make it look like it's something else. It's junk that you can make look cool. Basically what I do is I keep all these old electronics parts and things that just have a cool shape to them because you can always paint these things and make them look like something else. I mean, in this box, I've got like snack containers, I've got old parts of flashes, I've got pieces of printers, pieces of hard drives, I've got all sorts of stuff that by itself looks like junk. But if you put all these pieces together and kind of stack them up, you can make them look like there's something else. And that's a lot of fun. Basically, anytime I take something apart, if I'm gonna throw things away, I'll pull off all the parts that I think look cool and put them in these containers. And yes, it is trash, but it gives me an opportunity to reuse things from computers and printers, even lids from bottles that look kind of cool. All of this stuff can be transformed into sci-fi magic. So the fun part for me is taking all of these individual pieces and putting them together to make them look like something else. And then you add some paint and it will really sell the illusion. Check this out. This is a juice bottle, an old bearing, and some sort of a fitting off something that broke. But then you take these things and you start to stack them together and you realize that they can look like some sort of a robot socket or something. A little bit of weathering on this and it'll look awesome. So I got the pieces roughly in place where they're gonna go, and I'll have to like straighten them all up and everything before I glue them down. But also, before I glue them down, some of the pieces need a base coat of painting. So these green and orange and really brightly colored things that would stick out, I'm just gonna paint them different shades of gray and black so that I can then weather on top of them and they'll look more realistic. But one of the things about the metal pieces is I wanna leave them metal because it's more authentic. So I'm gonna get those things painted and glued down, and then we get to weather them.
Everything is glued in place, now it's time for one of my favorite parts, weathering. Now there's lots of fantastic videos on the internet that show all sorts of processes for weathering your props. I only do a little bit of it here and there, so I've got a pretty simple approach. The first thing I do is I take a wash, and this is basically like a super watered down acrylic paint in black or gray, and I'll just spread it all over the surface, and it gets down in all the cracks and all the details, and then you kind of dab it away, taking most of it with you, but then you leave some of that color, some of that black or gray, down in the texture of the surface. Then after letting that dry for a few minutes, I'll start dry brushing. And this is basically where you take a metallic, I often use silver, but it really depends on the project. You load it up on a brush, then you wipe almost all of it off on a paper towel or something like that. Once you've got just a little bit of paint on the ends of the brush, you run over the high spots, over the edges, over the parts that would take wear, and it looks like the paint has gotten worn off and it's showing the metal below. Then of course, you can add whatever paint you think makes it look rusty or old, whatever treatment you wanna to add to it. But one of the things that really sells weathering is trying to build fake decades on the piece. And by that, I mean do the processes over and over with different colors. So you do a black wash and then some dry brushing. Then you do a gray wash and dry brushing with a slightly different color. The more you do that, the more experience, the more age, the more life you're putting on the prop and it just makes it look awesome. Now another great option for weathering is rub and buff. This is basically like a wax with metal dust or something infused into it. And so you just need a little bit of it on the end of a piece of paper towel and you can wipe it all over the corners and get basically the same dry brushing effect, but you have a bunch of different types of metallics to work with. This stuff is great. You gotta let it dry though, otherwise it'll come off on your hands. Now the good and bad thing about weathering is that you can just keep going. You can do it forever and ever and ever, and eventually you just have to decide when to stop. I'm gonna stop right now because it's time to get this thing hung on the wall and try it out. Now before I put this laptop in there, I did wanna address a couple of things. One, the power plug is right here. And so I actually can keep this plugged in while it's in this container, and that's good because then I don't have to take it out to charge it. The other thing is airflow. Any computer needs a lot of airflow, and on this one, all of the fans are here on the bottom. So if you use this on a table, this is up against the table. There's enough space built into the thing here that it gets the airflow it needs. In this setting, there's actually more space behind it than there would be if it were sitting on a table. So I think I'm good to go. It's done, check it out. Like I said before, I'm pretty new to Home Assistant, so I've got a long way to go to customize this dashboard to actually make the most of this. But as a container to hold the laptop, I think this thing turned out awesome. I definitely feel like it belongs on a spaceship and that's totally what I was going for. Plus it's super cool that I can actually use the touchpad here and turn lights on and off, arm my alarm and all of that type of stuff right from here. I hope this project gave you an idea. Maybe there's something in your house that's kind of boring, kind of utilitarian. Now hopefully you have an idea, a way to wrap it in something that looks cool, something that you enjoy. If it did give you an idea for something, let me know about it down in the comments because I would love to hear it and it may give other people ideas as well. Huge thanks to HP Support for sponsoring this video. Be sure to go check out their YouTube channel. I'll put the link down in the description. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Now it's time for bloopers. Came from a spaceship. Let's do it. Oh, <laughs> it turned off. Turd. I'm just now dipping my toes, to, to, toes, my toes? I'm just now dipping my toe, my toe, yeah. <clears throat> I'm trying to say hole and toes at the same time. My whole toes. <laughs> oh boy.